So everybody can hear me, right? If yes, please say yes. Yeah, 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 great. How about others? Great, great. Wonderful. So, okay, let me first uh, put the slides, you know, so that, let me share the slides first so that you can um, view the slides. See that? Can you guys see the, see the slides I just uploaded? So that's the current slide. Can you download it? Great. So there are kind of two ways to ask questions. So the first way is using this chat, right? This chat screen, you can ask questions. Another one is you can unmute yourself. So let's, for example, let's say who want to speak, please you just unmute yourself and just speak up. So how about Tom? Can you speak a little bit? Yeah. Great, yeah, that's the way you can uh, build or unmute yourself to ask questions directly. Another way is you can, um, thank you Tom. So another way that you can just put the questions here. Uh, let's say probably, okay, we only have a few of students here. Mm. Let's just give some more minutes in case some students have an acting issue. So you guys can download the slides, right? Good. So let me see. I'm checking the email in case some students have issue. Okay, I think we can start. Uh, let's just uh, show the slides. Okay, so uh, I'm sharing the slides, right? Everybody can share the, can see the kind of slides, right? Display, correct? It's not some other weird window, right? Something like um, the first slides. Great. Okay. Wonderful. So probably I think everyone can uh, unmute yourself because I think we have a small class. But not everybody's here. So yeah, you can unmute yourself so that we can yeah, have some small chat. But anyway, so let's start. Uh, how about my volume? Is it too? Is it too no too soft or is it too loud? Up the volume. Good. Okay, wonderful. Okay, let's start. So first of all, I should apologize that I I have to give this kind of remote lectures uh, since my family just arrived and um, uh, they are healthy now. But I just in case that you know they are infected. So that's um, I think it's. It might be better that to you know isolate myself from you guys, so that we can wait for like three lectures, right? After that amount of time, I think it should be okay, right? So let's just um, for this coming three lectures, we use this kind of a Zoom to deliver the lectures, okay? So I'm sorry for this. And uh, as for the office hours, so again. Uh, I think the simplest way is try just email me. So I um, I will frequently check the email so that I can answer your questions. 
another way is that if if you need like face to face chatting, so probably like we can schedule this uh, Zoom meeting so that I can give you some um, direct uh, help. Um, yeah, that would be some way to you know reach out to me after the class. Okay, so let's start. So this is a I think this is a fifth lecture, right? Um, so that's in the week three and uh, here's the outline of today so pretty much that we will cover uh, some solutions algorithms so in the previous lecture we introduced some uh, multi-variable uh, optimization problems which means the problem is somehow pretty complex it has uh, multiple variables right multiple decision variables so that's called multi-variable problems we introduced several of them and for this class for today so we will do two things so one is trying to realize the problems we're trying to give a sense what the problem looks like right so how to realize using MATLAB that would be the first topic and secondly so we were trying to solve this kind of um, problems so there are many algorithms or many methods that can solve the multi-variable a optimization problems and today we are going to talk about two very simple ones I think the, the basic uh, solutions the basic algorithms right so let's start with this let me see I cannot move the slides can I okay so first let's review the um, the last lecture's problems. So in previous lectures, I basically introduced like uh, four different problems, right? And uh, the common property of this problem is that they, are, they have multiple variables, right? For example, the first one is called lifeguard, right? Two variable lifeguard. If you remember correctly, in the lifeguard problem, we have two decision variables. The first decision variables is from the sand to the, it's probably here, right? And that would be the lifeguard problem. So we have first the same variables. We need to decide where should I jump from the sand to the shallow water, right? That's the first decision. The second decision is where should I jump from the shallow water to the deep water, right? So that's two variables. So that's called two variable problem. And the objective function is pretty much the total time that from the travel from this lifeguard to the swimmer, right? That's the total time. So the function specifically has this kind of uh, a formula, right? It has, it is essentially is a function of uh, two uh, input variables, right? That's the first uh, problem. We want to minimize the total time of this. Right? And the second problem is, um, try to find some uh, the, the roots of a function, right? So we know that for conventional roots, that if you have the real path or real roots, right? Then that's simple, that's just one variable. But if you want to find a complex part, a complex roots, right? We know that a complex number has two parts, right? The real part and also the imaginary part. So for example, here, the A plus BI, that represents a complex roots. So we're trying to find a complex roots. And uh, the, the way we do this is trying to convert this finding roots problem into a minimization problem. We're trying to minimize this kind of, uh, you know, the absolute value of the function, right? Which is a real number then, but in this function, we have uh, two variables, right? The real part and the imaginary part. So that's the second problem we just introduced. The third problem is uh, we call it uh, linear regression or linear least square fitting. So it says that we have uh, multiple, we have an X and we have Y, right? So we want to like, uh, or let me put it another way. So we have a, a lot of sample points, right? They are kind of scattered. And we want to use a straight line to feed these data, right? We want to predict the y based on the x, right? A straight, straight line. So that's called linear regression. So you can see here, uh, this is a very simple uh, 
this formula has three data, right? Three samples. So one is a one hour. If you spend one hour, then you will get 50 uh, points, right? If you remember the setting, right? It's about like how many hours you spend on this course and the output will be the, your score, right? If you spend two hours, then your score will be 80. If you spend like um, three hours, then you will get 90, right? So that's uh, three samples. And we are trying to use the like a linear or straight line to fit this kind of data, right? And um, the arrow will be for each data, for each sample, we will use our model to predict it, right? And also the difference between the prediction and the true uh, score, that will be the error, right? So we sum all the square error together. So that will be our objective. We're trying to minimize these errors, right? That will be the linear regression. So you can generalize this problem into a kind of a multiple variables. But in this kind of last function, we can see that in the model, we have two variables, right? One is A, another one is B, right? This is a, this is a slope, this is an intercept, right? So from here, you can see this last function, you know, naturally has two variables, right? Because the model has two parameters, okay? So that's the third problem. So the last problem we introduced is called the nonlinear uh, least square fitting. So in this setting is the data uh, is the same, but the model, we, we change the model into a kind of a more a curvy model, right? Instead of for the straight line, we're trying to use, for example, here, I'm using a quadratic function to fit the model, right? Then we have three uh, decision variables, three uh, parameters, right? So which means in this function, we have three uh, variables and the objective is this kind of the total last, right? So we are trying to minimize this kind of functions, which has three uh, decision variables. Okay, so that would be a review of the, all the functions we introduced in this Monday, right? And uh, this just uh, gives you some setting of uh, the multi-variable optimization problems. Actually, in your domain, you can uh, propose a lot of uh, uh, similar problems, right? Because a lot of uh, real, a problems they have uh, multiple decisions right you have uh, you have to consider a lot of uh, inputs and variables right which means we have a lot of controls right and so that's something you need to think about it um, in your domain but here that's some samples i gave so today we actually if you look at this guy right this is an outline so for today we're going to do two things Number one is trying to realize it, right? So here we know that we have these problems, but what the function looks like, right? We want to have a sense of it. We want to have a way to realize it, right? So the first topic today is trying to realize it. For example, here we have a function, right? This is the total time of the, of the function, right? This is the total time, and the input variable is x, y, right? We have uh, two variables. And how to realize this kind of functions, right? So I would say the simplest way to realize is called surface plot. So because given any x, y, right? Just given the decision variables x, y, you can get a total time t, right? You can compute the total time t. So you can say, Laterally, it's x, y, and z, right? It's kind of like three-dimensional. So we can use a three-dimensional graph, you know, kind of a, to plot it. So here, can you see the movie on my mouse? Can you see that? Can you see my mouse? The cursor, can you see that? Good. So uh, if you look at this kind of a my mouse, is pointy, right? It's kind of a curvy, uh, very kind of a surface of its function. So each point on this surface is actually one point of this kind of sample. So which means that from X and Y, you can locate the Z. So that's the surface point, right? This is a very natural way to, uh, to do it. But the, but the downside is very obvious, right? For example, you don't know, actually you don't know which view is the best, right? Um, so let me just use some MATLAB to demonstrate this guy. Because this is static, it's hard to give some like, um, a more details on this graph. So that's something, uh, the downside of this graph, which means it's not really obvious. 
So what I want to do is let me just uh, uh, change the share screen with MATLAB. So which is this guy? Can you see the MATLAB now? Great, wonderful. So for some ones, you actually can talk. Okay. <laughs> So let me see if we realize problems. Uh, I think. For example, this one. Um, let me just pull this guy. So here I add a red dot here. So which means I will, this is a break point, which means if I run this code, it will stop here, right? Which means it will only run these three lines. So that's my purpose because that's, I want to plot the surface only. So let's run it. And uh, you can see, uh, can you see this guy? Can you see the plot? No, okay, I think that's because I need to generate another sharing with you. Okay, let's say that will be the sharing. How about this time? Good, so this is, um, this is a figure two actually, right? It's, uh, it, it, if you rotate it a little bit using mouse, how do you get rid of red circle? That's a good question. Let me just uh, go back to later. So see that this is a curvy, right? It's pretty curved. And you can see that this is, uh, the color represents the value here. For example, here, uh, can you see the insert color bar here, right? So I would click it. So there's a color bar here. Right, and then I can, uh, the color shows that this kind of a yellowish is kind of like 90, right? That's the objective function. And uh, so this kind of a very blue one, which represents very you know, small value, that's the minimal some, somewhere here, right? So by looking at this, you can get a sense of it. But somehow, in my experience, so this kind of a surface plot is good, give you 3D version, but it's not really uh, easy to uh, kind of understand or easy to you know, analyze it, I see. So let's come back to the code, how to get rid of the red circle. Let's see how to get rid of it. Uh, can you see my MATLAB now? Great, so from here, so let's say this is a real one, right? You just uh, click it, a little bit, and then it will pop up a kind of a, oh, you cannot see the screen. Let me just show the pop up one. So, hold on. Uh, by the way, can you see the editor here? Can you see something? Okay, that's great. So here, you just clear it, okay? Just clear it, then see that it's done. And then you can continue, or continue means that it will continue, I mean, until it meet another break point. So it's running through the end. If you want to run this kind of code line by line, right? You want just, just want, you want just run this kind of a specific line, then what you can do is here, step. So which means you can have a step, then it's run here. And then step another step, let's give you something else. And uh, so besides the step, actually you want sometimes, you want to jump in this kind of functions, right? You want to say what happened inside of this function. Then what you want to do is here, there is a step in. Can you see that? There is a step in. So you can uh, click it. So it will jump into the specific function just to, you know, you want to debug. Okay, then you can step by step. Uh, if you think it's, uh, sometimes, when you jump into the function, actually you can, you know, move your mouse, you know, just hover it here, you stop here, it will show that what's the value of each variables, okay? That's some, this is some like, uh, you know, debugging, uh, so you can know what happened here, okay? And also here you can copy, you can copy this guy and paste here, right? And then enter, and then we'll show what, what he says so this, this. Okay, so that's debug. Uh, I will, if you want to know more about debug, I could give you some tutorial later or yeah. But for now, that's some, 
that's give you a, a flavor of it. So for now, I don't want to be stuck in this function, right? I want to jump out. So one way to do this is here, this is a step out. And then we'll jump back to this function, right? And then you can step by step, right? That's something like this, okay? And um, if you want to end this kind of, uh, you don't want to debug anymore, what you can do is here, just create debugging, okay? Just create or just run it through it. Okay, that's something. Uh, okay, that's the, the debugging. So essentially, we just uh, show how to, uh, you know, to the surface plot. So let, let me do it again. So this is a surface plot, right? So it shows a 3D surface with some like, uh, this is the X and Y, right? So this is a, the X and the Y is here, and uh, this is the Z, right? You can show the 3D version. Okay, let's come back to the slides. I think um, we're talking about the first method is called the uh, surface, surface plot to plot it, right? There are some like, um, yeah, I will upload all the a kind of uh, mess or the codes so that you can reproduce this result. Oh, probably I can do it now. How about this? Let me just, uh, oh, I cannot do that. Hold on. How can I, oh, I cannot do that. Anyway, I will upload the code later. So for now, we know that the first method to realize a problem is use the surface plot, right? Pretty much is a pre-plot the function itself. But I don't like it, I think, a better way is, this is a good way. You can have a very direct you know, sense of it, but it's not really good for analyze, right? So what I, what I would prefer more is actually this guy. It's called uh, a contour plot. Uh, can you guys see the semi-slides, right? It's in the slides mode, right? Good. So for here, uh, I think this is a better way. Thank you. So this is a better way to a, display a problem. So essentially it's, uh, it's kind of like a contour, right? This is a quite contour plot. I think this is more uh, accurate and sometimes we can uh, really, for example, it's uh, much better to uh, visualize our algorithms using the contour plot other than the surface. So you will know this late, uh, later because the contour plot is a major, uh, is there anything wrong with the mic? So you cannot hear it. And let me see, how about everybody else? Can you hear it? Mm, I'm okay, okay. I think if the volumes, ah, let's, so Yuri, are you okay now? How about now? Can you hear, can you hear me? Okay, I got another. <laughs> okay, sounds good. No, really, um, can you just uh, rejoin us? So probably, let me just, yeah. Okay, let's, mm, let's, let me give you like 10 seconds. How about that? You can, okay, thank you, Yishun. So you can, I think you can rejoin, right? You just, Let's give it some, I think, anyway, I think Yuri has some connection issue. So probably, probably you need to, you know, watch the recording later, okay? Or you can, you want to rejoin it or just, you know, have a better network. I think that would be the issue. Okay, let's continue. Um, okay, yeah, I guess we have to move on. So the second method we say is contour plot. So for contour plot is something like essentially is uh, this graph is a 2D graph instead of 3D. So we know 3D is somehow more like visually better, right? But actually for a, from the uh, perspective of, of analyzing, I think that this kind of 2D is better. So for example, here the contour is a 2D, 
and um, it contains a lot of uh, contour or a lot of uh, curves, right? So you can see here in this graph. So for each curve, it means that all the points on this curve, for example, let's say we have 40, right? Which means that all the curves in this, or all the points on this curve will have the function value of 40. So they have the same function value, which means they have the same height if you are uh, looking at them in the surface plot. Okay, that means contour. Contour just means that for each curve, they have the same uh, value, same z value or function value. Okay, great. Wonderful. And uh, so from the right side, you can see there's a color bar. So for the color bar, it means like, uh, the also it means the function value of each color for example here the very blue one for example the center the, the i would say the top right right this kind of a curve it has 35 value it means that all the points here has 35 and the color is very blue right pretty blue so which means that's the lowest value here so that's a convention of our plot so the more blue means like that's the minimal, right? So, which means if you later, if in, when I was explaining the algorithms or kind of introduce something like a plot, right? So if you see this color, you can see that this is a minimal, right? And this kind of more yellowish guy is like the, has a higher value. So what we want is we are trying to identify this kind of circle or the center of the circle, right? So that that would be our uh, target of, of, of optimization, right? By trying to locate the minimum of the function. And this, again, this contour plot is really helpful because you can see a lot of uh, information from it. So one thing is, as I mentioned, that each color or each curve represents the the height or the function value, they have the same value, right? That's the one thing which means they are, have equal uh, height. Secondly is that the gap between the line, for example, if you see like a 65 and 70, right? There's a gap between them, there's another gap, right? This is kind of a more dense. So the dense kind of a gap or the short gap, meaning that they are pretty steep, which means the surface is pretty steep because the function value you know reduced dramatically right with a short range in comparison if you look at the top portion right here so from 35 to 40 actually there's a very a huge distance right so which means this portion is pretty flat right so actually if you look at the uh, okay actually if you look at this kind of thing right that's um, something it's similar with us, right? So from the this guy, right? From the from like a, a hundred and zero, that would be a very, I would say, a steep, right, surface. But uh, this kind of uh, hundred to hundred, which is this corner, right? Which is a very flat surface, which is here, um, right? So that would be the two major uh, plots we're going to use, you know, for realizing and uh, among these two I would prefer using contour and also in this book in the in this kind of a book or there are many other kind of uh, algorithm books they will use the contour to you know illustrate the algorithms right so uh, and also actually this is a very effective way to uh, you know communicate your problems and also to communicate your algorithms so that, that would be uh, very efficient. But sometimes I would say um, this kind of a control part plot is not really uh, that powerful. Uh, sometimes it has uh, some like, uh, you know, number one is, is sometimes it's not always possible, right? So because if you want to generate this kind of a control plot, you have to evaluate a lot of points, right? You have to evaluate almost every point. So that somehow it's not really uh, possible for all the problems, but this kind of thing, you can give a general idea of it, right? So that's the first thing, it's not always possible. Another one is, this is only for 2D, for two variables. So what if I have uh, multiple variables? So for example, in 
in our problem of this guy, right? In the, in the last problem, we say the linear and this square, right? We have ABC, we have three variables, right? How can we realize this problem? Okay, I can say here's the answer. So we can actually uh, use the contour plot. But the thing is that because this is only for two variables, so what we can do is that we can choose A, B, right, from A, B, C. So, and we fix the C variables. So that's not some way to realize. So which means we, we know that the problem has multiple variables. It's okay. We just fix some other variables. We just pick the two variables that we are most interested in. Right? For example, we are most interested in A and B, so we just plot A and B. And for C, we just give in like a different, we can try C equals one, C equals two ten, and C equals to like a hundred. We can pick different levels. And then for each level of the C, we can plot A and B, right? So that's some way to realize a problem with more than two variables. And again, this kind of tricks you can switch to other pair of uh, variables. For example, you can pick P, B, and C, right? And then fix the A. So that's another way to do it. So you can, by, you know, plotting a lot of different pairs of uh, variables, you can get a kind of overall idea of the problem. So that's some, uh, some way to uh, realize the problem. Okay. Um, let's see. So that's all for the realization. That will be the first part of today. So actually, um, this will be very, I mean, it will be very critical for us because we will see a lot of this kind of control plotting uh, when we are trying to introduce the, the algorithms, okay? So uh, I think uh, for today's homework, there's some like homework trying to realize different functions so that uh, just really do the homework and let me know if you have any questions or any issues of trying to plot in this kind of things. Okay, so that would be the uh, plotting size. So for today's another, uh, the second part would be some like uh, how to solve this kind of uh, multi-variable uh, problems, right? So actually there are, I would say maybe more than a hundred I think more than 100 algorithms that we can solve the optimization problems, even, even more than this long right? So in our book, actually we only have listed like here about six algorithms, which is, they, they are pretty uh, popular. And um, of course their difficulties level actually runs, you know, for starting from the very easy one, the easiest level, for example, the first two and uh, through the very hard, very difficult one, which is the uh, crazy Newton's methods. And there are many other advanced uh, uh, algorithms. But these algorithms are, these kind of methods are the fundamental ones. So today, we're going to talk about the first two, which are the very simple, very, I mean, fundamental one, right? The, the first one is a Monte Carlo algorithm. So it's, um, yeah, it's a, I think that's the easiest one. And the second one would be the marching grade uh, algorithm. So marching, marching grade is something like uh, binary search, but it's a 2D version. So that would be the, you know, today's topic. Let's try to solve the first one, right? The first one, I would say it's, uh, it's called Monte Carlo algorithm. So anybody knows who is this guy, Monte Carlo? Let's see, someone says no, okay. <laughs> it's, uh, I think it's a, it's a, it's a mathematician actually. So it's, I mean, I believe it's he, I mean, this uh, gentleman, he's, he's pretty, I mean, popular because he actually uh, create a new, I mean, research direction. Yes, yeah, so it's a guy. <laughs> no, he, I mean, it, it, this gentleman, so, is uh, pretty popular. He, I mean, created a, opened a new, totally new direction. So actually, he's trying to use uh, 
statistic or simulation to solve a lot of problems. So whenever you see the Monte Carlo algorithms, so you can see a lot of this uh, algorithm, a lot of methods, they are named as Monte Carlo algorithm. It's not, uh, actually there are many, many, many different types and different problems, different methods. They have their unique name because their essential idea is trying to use simulation or you know, kind of a random numbers to solve a problem. So that's called Monte Carlo. Means like you just use random samples to solve some problem, okay? Use the simulation and the statistics to solve it. So similarly here, we also have the Monte Carlo algorithm. It means that we, here's the, the three words here actually is a key. So we randomly evaluate samples. So because our target is trying to find the sample, trying to find the, you know, the center of the circle, right? We're trying to find this. So Monte Carlo's algorithm is trying to do this. So actually three steps. So the first step is trying to, you know, first step is sample, generate some like X, Y samples, right? So if you see the slides, actually a lot of a black circle, right? Each circle represents one sample, one point of X or Y. That's the decision value. And I randomly generate it, right? This is a kind of a random. That's why we'll call it a Monte Carlo because this is kind of randomly generated samples, right? That's step one. We generate a lot of sample that's spanning the whole design space, right? That's kind of, you know, we can say that. <laughs> scared me actually. <laughs> so that's something like, um, this is the first step, trying to generate a lot of black points, right? They actually randomly, you know, located, right? That's the first step. There's, there, are, there are a hundred different samples. The second step, that for each sample, we will evaluate its, the function value. If you see this kind of a graph I generated, so the curve, actually that's the surface. The surface is our function, right? We just plot it, that's the surface plot. And then for each point, we sample, right? And we can evaluate its function and then plot here. So the star mark represents the sample points with the value functions. Um, that's a very good question. So the number of uh, points, actually there are some like uh, mm, theories talking about if you want to get some accuracy, then what's the number you need? There is a kind of a formula to determine it. Um, but I would say for here, I, gen I just generate 100 points and um, I cannot guarantee the accuracy. But there are some theories say that if you want to ach I mean, achieve like a zero point point, let me say if you want to achieve zero point zero zero one, then there will be some numbers. That's, um, oh, so I would say, let me see, hold on, what happened to here? Send to everyone, let's see, okay, right? So that means like um, there are some theory to determine based on your desired accuracy. Um, so I, I don't know that theories, I know there is one, but I don't know what it, exactly it is, okay? Um, I would say this methods somehow is just for like a very uh, preliminary exploration of the problem because you cannot really guarantee that the problem is solved. For example, if you take a look at the step three, right? After you evaluate all the hundred one, so you can see that the minimal one is this guy, right? This kind of a, the red star, and we can really because we can we evaluated a hundred different samples, and we can get a hundred uh, function value, and we can find the minimal one, right? right? We can find the lowest guy. That's very simple, and then we can locate this guy. But you can see that this algorithm is pretty much very random, which means sometimes you can get a point 
or you can get the mean ball located in this circle. And sometimes not. So which means you cannot guarantee that the, you can find the solutions. So probably if you want to achieve some accuracy, then the intuition is that you have, you need to generate a lot of them. So again, this is a one way to, this is just the simplest way to uh, solve the problem. Use this kind of a very uh, simple idea, right? Just sam randomly sample the design space and then generate the uh, functions, right? That's the very simple idea. It, it can only give you some preliminary results. You cannot get many more. So let me show you why this is not that good. So let me just uh, share another kind of a MATLAB screen so you can take a look at it. Uh, let me say, I will share the MATLAB, right? This is the MATLAB. And here, let's say, um, this is a Monte Carlo demo. So this is a whole uh, M file. So let me just run it. So you can see that this is, uh, okay. Uh, can you see the, let me see here. Probably I need to share this guy. So this is a, another run of the same code, but you can see that this time I get a very good result, right? It sounds like the, this kind of a point is the center of the blue one, right? Which is good, we like it. But let's say if I run it again, I cannot guarantee the same result. So let's say for example, it's just the same code, I didn't change anything, so I just run it again. So I see that I got this kind of a, it's another kind of things, see that? So let me just share this result with you. So that will be this guy. So if you look at the screen, right? There's a screen, the latest version of it. So you can see that the optimal, the best solution is somehow is not at the center of the circle, right? So which means the same code cannot generate the same result because it is random, right? And that's somehow it's the downside of it. And also you cannot guarantee the, the accuracy. So just as like a, a sham, right? You mentioned that, I mean, there's an intuition of the numbers. Uh, short answer is yes, but you need to compute it. There's some theory about it. But again, the number will be, if you want change, like you want, I would say, if you want increase the resolution a little bit, for example, if you want to change like from the, if you want to change this level of, uh, then probably you need uh, more than 10 times, right? More than that. So that I would say you need many, many, much, much more points trying to increase the resolution. So which is not good. So, but this way is just a simple way to explore the problem, okay? Uh, yeah, that's, uh, this method is called Monte Carlo, right? Because it's simple. So next time, if somebody talking about uh, Monte Carlo, so actually it's pretty simple, which means just randomly samples or, you know, generate samples and trying to, you know, uh, get a the city, kind of a, get some average or get the mean or max value of it. Then that, that, that's the essential idea of Monte Carlo algorithm for any problems, okay? Any questions here? So besides, yeah, that's a very good questions on the numbers. Um, another reason why we like this kind of Monte Carlo is because the, it's pretty simple to implement it. If you look at my, if you look at this code, right, you can see the code. So what you really need is something like, uh, that's what you really need. There's several land of code, right? Then you can solve the problem. That's pretty simple. And it's, you can have a very quick uh, fix on it. So that's why we want to use this guy to have a preliminary uh, exploration of the problem, okay? So let's come back to this problem. Can we do more step around the mineral? Oh, that's a very good point. So 
yeah, everybody sees the uh, Hannah's uh, comments, right? So can we do a kind of a refine the, the things, right? That's a, I think that's a very good idea because if you see this, I think that's a very good point. Let me just give you some like, uh, if you like. <laughs> that's great because I think that's a very good idea. So we can actually do multiple steps, right? The first iteration, we just generate 100 points, right? Pretty in a very vast, you know, very large design space from this 100, from zero to 100 and zero 100, right? Which is a very huge design space. But after the first iteration, we can locate that this kind of, uh, you know, red things, right? It's kind of, uh, you know, uh, very close to the minimum, but not really. So we can have a very small range, right? Oh, my, my bad. We can do a second iteration. So we can generate samples that's very close to this range, right? Uh, for example, we can generate samples that's just within a square of it, a tiny square of this kind of range. And then we can find another, uh, you know, much better solutions. Yes, I think that's, that would be a very good idea agree with this so okay that will be our homework how about this that will be our homework the first problem our homework trying to do two steps right the first step is with a very large design space and generate sample with it the second time will be in this one probably let's say what's the time now do i have enough time if i have uh probably let's see i got it Let's see, I will mark this down. So if we have time, I can show you how to do this, right? The essential idea is pretty much generate samples surrounding this best location, right? So that would be the idea of it. I like it, that's, that's true. Uh, oh, that's a very good point, how to avoid that. <laughs> so the idea is, that's a very good point. So how to avoid this kind of things? It's possible, right? If your second trial, all the points are very close to this point, right? Then you may miss out the center, right? So I think there's a there's no answer to it, okay? There's a, actually, there's no book or textbook talking about this. But my suggestion or my idea is that actually uh, you can, shouldn't be small. Yeah, but it shouldn't be large, actually. So you can say that you can find the surrounding points, right? For example, for this kind of red dot, actually for surrounding, you can say multiple surroundings, right? You may need to check the smallest 10, right? The 10, smallest 10 values. So I would say you just, you, you are not checking the lowest one, but you're checking the, you know, the, I would say they are like the second smallest and the third smallest, the 10th smallest, right? You can check like a multiple smallest surrounding it and then use their range as your second iterating, uh, you know, search range. I think that would be safe, right? Instead of just looking at this guy or just give a random value. So maybe a better solution is you can check all the surrounding or the lowest the 10 lowest guy, right? Check their range. So I think that would be some, uh, a better way. But maybe I think another, a kind of, a, another simple way is you can reduce, you can half the search range or, you know, just go a third or some, some number of it, right? Just a fraction of this space, but it's not really small enough, but somehow uh, not really a mini really tiny area, but some like, a, one third of it, something like this, that would be safe, right? So everybody is clear about what I said. I said like two ways, right? One way is, okay, good, or maybe three ways. One is give you like a fixed amount of area, right? Just like uh, minus one, positive minus one. Second is just trying to get one third or a portion of the overall design space. A third method is trying to check the lowest 10 points, right? And that's some way you can take a look. So that's something like, uh, yeah, we're trying to improve the algorithm. That's a very good uh, starting point. Thank you, Henry. I think that's a very good 
a very good question. Okay, so that will be our uh, homework. I will add it to the homework. Good. So this is this is a, a kind of a, the the cause of the Monte Carlo algorithm. I just showed you, right? So we can, I think we can skip this guy, right? You can try this later. And then let's come back to, I mean, the another algorithm. So this algorithm is somehow a, it's kind of a 2D version of, um, <laughs> no, come on. So someone says like, uh, no, this problem is easier actually than the problem I already have. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> That's a benefit actually for you guys, trying to yeah, try different methods to improve your algorithm. Okay, so let's come back to the second algorithm. It's called marching grade. So this is a pretty interesting one actually. So I generate a kind of a, animation for you guys. Can you see it? Great, so this is an animation. Oh, but it's not stopped here. Probably I need to. It's called marching grid. If you look at this kind of a graph, there is a red grid, right? So the grid actually has nine points, right? Three by three, three rows, three columns, nine points. And uh, yeah, probably you need, you need to watch this animation for a longer time. I think I'm pretty happy when I watch this kind of uh, you know, animation. I think it's uh, pretty funny. So for this grade, you can say at each time, we will evaluate nine points, right? And uh, depends on which one is the best among the nine points, we will have a different uh, options. So this is, can I stop it? Let me see if I can stop and I can give a further explanation. Uh, probably, let me see, can I stop it? Uh, hey, oh no, I cannot do it. So then, I will use, um, I think, anyway, we can do that later. We can do the demo later. But let me just um, use this kind of animation to illustrate. So the idea is that, the first of all, we will generate a grid with uh, line points, right? So three by three. And then we will evaluate all the nine points, right? Uh, after nine points are evaluated, we can find which point is the lowest, which point is the best one. If that point is on the edge of the grid, what happened? For example, here, on the edge or on the corner of the point, right? What we want to do. So we want to march our cube to the labors, right? For example, here, that's the better one. So for example, here, we have nine points, right? that are evaluated. And the red one here is actually the best, the lowest point, right? That's the best point. So what we want to do for this kind of thing is, we can pick this kind of red point as the, you know, the best, the current best, right? And then our grid, we can generate another grid, which is centered at this current best. Okay, so the previous, you know, this kind of uh, the edge point is becoming the center of the next grid. And surrounding it, we have generated other eight points, right? By doing so, you can see that my grid is actually move, it's kind of moving, right? Because initially the center is here, and then after we evaluate its nine kind of, you know, the points, we figure out this kind of a red point on the edge is the best. Then we center this kind of thing. And then what we do is we will create a grid surrounding it. So that's our, the new grid. And after the new grid is evaluated, we can pick like um, the, the second, or we can update 
this kind of center to this kind of thing, right? We can continuously repeat this process, trying to move the grid. But until some point, if you look at this kind of animation, oh my goodness, let's say the evaluation, let's say animation again, you can see that move once, move second times, and for now, right, we cannot move, right? The reason is, when we reach this kind of a center portion, we figure out the best solution is still at the center of the grid, right? We cannot move, we cannot really update the best the solution. So what we can do is only we can reduce the grid size, okay? So that's the second option of the grid. So you can see that depends on where the best point is. If the best point of the line points is on the edge or on the corner, then we can move the grid, right? With the same size of the grid. The another option is if the grid, right, the center one is the best solution, then we cannot move it. What we can do is the second option. We're trying to reduce the size of the grid, right? Just reduce it half of it. And then this will be our new grid. So by doing this kind of a, you know, iteration, right? After each time, we can update our grid, either the center of it or the size of it, okay? So that will be the essential idea of this machine grid. So each time you just operate, update the grid, either, you know, have a new center or a new size, okay? So that will be the general idea. So here, this is a kind of a more formal way to, uh, you know, illustrate or state this problem, this algorithm. So the first step or step zero will be some initialization, right? You have to pick some value for the start point, right? So for here, the our initial guess of the solution, the X star and Y star, we just pick the center of the design space, right? Just 50-50. And for the DX, we pick 20-20. And it turns out it doesn't matter you pick 10, 20, 50, actually, doesn't matter. So you can pick any of it. So you can try this actually, because this method is pretty robust, just similar as the binary search. And then the iteration begins from the step one. We will evaluate the line points and the line points is centered as, oh my, I'm sorry about this kind of, uh, this kind of things. So let me just review, let me just, uh, yeah, I think, I'm sorry, I think the slides have the error, so I have to change it a little bit. Um, sorry for this kind of things. Oh my goodness. Just give me one second to change it. Okay. Just give me one second. Okay, so I just updated the slides here. So you can see that we will evaluate line points and this line points are centered as the current location, right? The, if you see this, the center one, that would be the current star, X star and Y star, that's the current center. And then surrounding, there are eight corners, right? That would be the, our line points. And then we will evaluate these line points and pick the lowest one, the minimum of the line points, as our new center, our you know new uh, solution of it. If this solution is at the center of the grid, right? If at the center of the grid, which means we cannot move the, we will not move the grid. So what we can do is we can reduce the size of it. And then if the size is somehow very desirable, desirable means it's smaller than our threshold, right? Then we can you know, exit, right? And the code will, will pretty much return a value. Otherwise, I, we can iterate this whole loop, step one and two. And by doing this kind of uh, repeatedly, we can give a very good, you know, very small grade and a very good solution. Everybody is clear about it? So, good. Any kind of questions before I jump into the MATLAB demo? Give me some feedback.
No? Okay, what's the question here? Oh, no questions, come on. <laughs> okay, that's good. Mm. So we can actually, mm, let's look at the uh, MATLAB code. We can give a demo. So here I have a, uh, this is uh, the code actually how I create the, simul the animation. So I will upload this guy, we can learn from it. So if you look at this kind of a code, you can see, can you see the code, everybody? Yes, right? Great. So if you look at the code, so the, this line, the firstly, I need to clear everything, right? We want to a very like, I want a very clear, I mean, a workspace, right? There's no, some like a previous uh, value or something like this, right? So I clear, I can, um, you know, kind of clean all everything. And then, from here, this we define our objective function, right? And after that, probably let's, uh, I think a better way is, I show you is here. I add a breakpoint here and then let's run it. So it generates the contour of it, right? This is a contour and how I illustrate the, the kind of algorithm. And initialization, right? We pretty much that picked the start point, you know, kind of a random, right? You can pick any value and any grid size. And then we set our total number of iteration as 10. And this guy is just to record uh, every frame, you know, each frame I need to record here. So you can ignore it. So for here, there's a loop. So there's a loop. This loop is trying to do the iterations. So as we mentioned, right, the first step is we will evaluate nine points, right? And uh, which centered on the current best, right? So we just, so this nine code, they are trying to form nine points. So probably I can put a red point here and then I just continue. So it will quickly run to here, right? And at this stage, if you hover the mouse to the X, see that it will kind of show, can you show the, can you say something there? It says like nine times, one times nine double. Everybody, can you say something there? Great, so it means that that's, that's the current setting or the current uh, value of the X, right? I already said this kind of things. And also for the Y, that would be this. So actually, uh, let's see. Yeah, that's something like this. Uh, that's the nine points and then for this code, this line of code is trying to evaluate this line points. Okay, so when I do it, it will return nine different function values. Okay, that's the nine different function value. Basically, that's a grid, right? Each point represents some point in the in the grid. Okay, there's nine points, and then this line actually, I think Ten is asking this question: What is what's the What's the meaning of this guy, right? This line is trying to find where the minimum is. For example, here, if you look at the nine numbers, you can see like the first one is 51, second one is 44. If you look at the, the sixth one, right? 38 point something, 38, that would be the smallest, right? So we want to know that the six point is something we want, which means this code is trying to return the six, right? So if we step here, if we click the step, so we can see here, which means index the six, because we are trying to locate where the minimum is. Okay, that's a minimum. So currently the sixth one is a minimum one. And the uh, sixth one is not the center, it's on the edge, so we can move actually. Uh, for this, chunk of code is just some like you know uh, plotting so i will uh, skip it now we can come back later so let's just continue and let's see we continue here uh, actually it generates one iteration but let me just share this kind of uh, that's weird so we're not sharing this so here 
can you see the kind of uh, the figure here? Everybody, great. So you can see here, that's the first grid, right? The first grid we have generated. So we have uh, nine points, right? So at the center, that will be the, if you look at this guy, that's 50, 50, right? And uh, we have uh, on the red one, that's 50, 70, something like this, right? So there are like uh, nine points and this guy, you know, that's the sixth one, right? This guy, by comparing with others, that's the best solution. So that's the current best, right? And then this is the current best. And because, so that's somehow we generated the first grade and the first best solution. So that's it. So let's come back to the code. Let me just return to the code. So hold on. Uh, let me just see this guy. For this code, so we already generate the new best, right? The new best is at the top, right? 50, 70, right? We just say that that's the red point at, at the, you know, the top middle, right? That's 50 and 70, if you take a look. So that's a car, our current best. We just update the center of the grid, which is the top middle uh, part, right? This is uh, 50, 70. And because, the point is not the center because the fifth one, right? From one to nine, the fifth one is the center. If you look at our definition here, X5, the fifth one is the center, right? Because the index here is at the top edge, right? It's not in the center, which means we don't need to reduce the size, right? So this guy, if you step, it will just you know, skip this kind of uh, reducing things. Then that you know just complete the first iteration, and then because we have a for loop, so when we try to click the step again, it will come back to the second iteration. Okay, it will you know the because the x star which is the center right is already updated as fifty and seventy right, which is the top point. Uh, why do we have uh, equal to doubled? Uh, you are talking about this guy, right? So uh, that's a very good question. So in MATLAB, actually, uh, in MATLAB, there's something like uh, the syntax is pretty uh, loose. I mean, it's not that strict. You actually can compare a double with an int. So that's another issue. So I think, uh, let me see, for example, we can compare 5.1 equals to five. Let's give you two, that's one, right? That's because in MATLAB, we can really compare them together. Or see that this will not. Um, so I would say in MATLAB, actually everything is doubled. Even for five, somehow it will convert the five into 5.0, something like this. So I know that in like C, C++ or some words that um, you have to uh, take care of the, their type, right? But in MATLAB, the syntax is pretty uh, loose. So actually you can automatically compare the double with the int value. So it will actually upgrade the int into a double and then try to compare them, okay? So which means it's talking about, it's actually, doing something like this equals to five points, something like this. Okay, that's something it's, it is doing. Okay, uh, where are we now? Oh, we're talking about the second iteration, right? So for the second iteration, uh, wouldn't it be if statement at end need to update the new grid, uh, keep reference at five. Let me understand, wouldn't the if statement at the end need to update to the new grid? So the if statement is trying to update the size of the grid. So this is the center, because every time the center should be updated. But for the size, it's not. It depends on whether the center, whether the, you know, the current best is at the center or not. If it's at the center, then we need to update the, we need to reduce the size. Otherwise, if the current best solution 
is on the edge or on the corner, then we don't need to update this. Okay, let's see what's, uh, what do you mean actually, I, did, I couldn't understand. We won't this code keep the reference at five. Uh, what do you mean by this? Uh, wouldn't uh, each update for <clears throat> my professor yeah 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 what, so what you in the future the graph is going to need to have right because eventually it is going to be on the same point yes so at some point and that index, point might not be five that point might be three no so the point is uh it has to be the five which is it has to be the center you know, I think asking the location. Not, not multiple iterations in, though. I think this is a, no, you know, after some iteration, so the index will become five, you know. Uh, let All me, right. Never mind. Uh, I think, okay, let me just go through this whole thing and then let, let's see, can I answer your question or not? But, um, Uh, so I think for that, are you asking for the location or no, Dylan? I don't know. I'll, I'll figure it out later. It's okay. 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 Anyway, so for the second iteration, actually we are trying to form a new grade, right? The new grade is centered as the 50, 70, right? It's not the previous center. So we have a new center and then we're trying to find the minimal. At this time, it's a nine. Nine is at the, the top right corner. So again, let me just add a break point here, and then we can run through it. So let me share the result with you. So this is the point. See that our center is kind of moving up, right? It's 50, 70. Initially, it's 50, 50. And then we update the center to this. And the size is the same as previous, right? We didn't update it. But for now, the best one is somehow in the right corner, in the 1790, right? So at this point, we have to use this point, this kind of 1790 as a new center of our grid, right? Our grid will move to here. And because this center, this kind of the best solution is not in the center of the previous grid, which means the size will not change, but just the center will change, okay? Clear with that? So what I mean is, in the code, what we do is something like this, right? Because the center will be updated. So the center is something like 70, 90. But again, the index is not five. Five means the center, right? So we don't need to update these kind of things. So we can escape. And then let's redo the third iteration. If you look at the II, II is um, you know, this, the third iteration three, right? That's the third iteration. We re this kind of line, we are formulate a new grade, right? That's a new grade. And then we can find this new grade. So pretty much we evaluate every point and then we can find the index. So which is five for now. And then that's the center of it. So let me just, again, run through here. Okay. Let me show you this. Let's show, let me show you this. See that for this iteration, iteration three, our center is 1790. But, and also, you know, when we evaluate all the points, we figure out that the best solution is also the center of it, right? So at current stage, this is five, right? That's the center of it. So the best solution is actually not really changed, right? It's still at the center and the, the grade has no way to move, right? No way to move. So what can we do now is actually reduce the grid size, okay? At current stage, we have to reduce the grid size. So let's come back to the code. You can see that clearly. So because uh, here, see that? We're trying to update, but the, actually the center point is not changed, but the index, See that this point is the center of it. So 
we have to reduce the size, right? And then that's the first time we reduce the size because there's no way for our grid to move, okay? No way for it to march. And then let's come back to the fourth iteration. So we can do the same iteration, right? We form a new gray, and then probably, let's say, at this time, index is not five, so it's not the center. Let's just run through the breakpoint. And let me show you the result, so you can see here. So the size is pretty much reduced. Initially, the size is 20, right? But for now, you see this is 1719. This is a 8019, right? The size is reduced to 10, right? Initially, it's 20. So we can see that the size is uh, reduced. And for this, reduce the grid, right? For this grid, we evaluate its nine points, and we figure out on the right edge, there is a, that's the best solution. So at this, at this point, again, we can move this grid again, right? Because this kind of the best solution is not at the center, which means we can move this grid and center it here, right? So if you come back to the MATLAB, that, that's something exactly this code is doing. See that? Something like, uh, yeah, you just ignore these kind of things. And then we can come back to this guy. So let's just uh, run through it. So I think you got the general idea of it, right? Uh, that's something like this. Probably, let me just uh, uh, run it through it. Okay. Can you see that? So the whole code is kind of updating, updating, right? Okay. So finally, it ends. So let's come back to our code, and uh, so that will be the demo of this kind of uh, a algorithm. Okay. So you can see that how each each iteration is kind of updating, right? So for each iteration. We only need to do two things, right? One thing is we need to, we could do two things, two options, right? One is to update the center, or we need to update the size. So that's something like this one, right? So here, one is you can update the center, or you can update the size, okay? I think that will be the end of this uh, kind of algorithm. And um, any questions for now? So I think. Yep. Hold on. Let me show you something more. Uh, any other questions? Okay. Let me see. I think today we have talked about two algorithms, right? One is uh, this kind of uh, binary search, and uh, uh, not binary search. One is um, uh, kind of a Monte Carlo algorithm. Another one is uh, marching cube. Reducing size meets the minimum. That's a very good point. Anybody can answer it? The short answer is no. The short answer is no. Mm. So I can uh, show you something. Let me see. How can I show you something here? Let's see. The short answer is no, because, hold on, what I'm doing here. Uh, see that? Uh, if we figure out that our uh, kind of a, best solution is at the center, right? We have to reduce the size. And uh, by reducing the size, actually, uh, I, hold on, we are talking about miss the minimum. Mm. Okay, I need to recall this kind of answer. It's not a no, it's somehow yes and no. So even if you miss, say that it's possible, I would say it's possible. It's possible. It's possible that if when we reduce, for example, here, right? We know that this is a current, the, the red point here. Can you see the slides, everybody? I have to make sure that, okay. So the current, this is the, the current best solution 
is the center of the grid, okay? And then we decide to reduce the size of the grid, right? Which is here, right? That's a red point. But does it mean that our best solution is within this red grid? No, actually it's possible that the point, the best point could be outside of the red, but inside of the kind of the blue, right? Something like in between the small gray and larger gray. It's possible, it's very possible, but it doesn't matter because even if, for example, it's at, at this kind of, you know, this kind of area, right? Even if the minimal is at this area, but it's okay because when you update the legs grid, this kind of a small things, right? This kind of a red grid will move to here. So which means the left top corner will be the lowest guy, right? Because your center is something like here. Uh, you know what I mean here? So, I mean, it's okay if the red kind of a grid doesn't cover the minimal, it's okay. Because when, the, when we try to update it, that we do the second iteration, we are trying to update the red grid, then this kind of uh, the corner will be the center. Then we will not change the size, but we will kind of cover this kind of, uh, you know, the big size of it. Then that will be covered the points. Am I clear? Do we start resize some point and start moving the grid again? Yes, that's very true. It's kind of a, yes, that's, that's very true, very true. So I think uh, the reducing size and the moving the grid it somehow it kind of, uh, you know, they are intervening with each other. Sometimes we need reduce, and after the reduce, you need to move, and then reduce, then remove. It's kind of like, uh, it's, uh, it's not really a phase one, just uh, move, phase two, just reduce. No, they are kind of, uh, you could, you know, they can happen either way. So you can have reduce and move, and reduce and move, in the, it's kind of, you know, they, they take in turns, it's possible. So that's why we, even if we miss, as, even if we miss the point by reducing the size, but at the second iteration, it will move to there. So that's the key thing of this guy. It's still at the center. Uh, then that's, if the minimal, you mean the, se you mean the second iteration, right? You, are, you mean the second iteration, the minimum of the second iteration? Okay, so which means that, that point, if the minimal is in the center, then which means our grid is already covered that point, right? So that's, that's something like this. So if the minimal is in the center, which means our current grid already covered this kind of uh, the, the, the best one. So think about this, if the best solution is at the center, then the minimal must be within the grid, correct? That's something you need to think about it, or you can prove it, right? For any grid at any iteration, if the minimum is at the center, which means the best solution of the function should within the grid we have. Okay, that would be the argument. So, Yi Xuan, do you do you think a grid? Uh, probably, I think I, I can uh, make up some more a, a kind of slides trying to illustrate these kind of things, right? How, what if we miss the kind of best, miss the minimum when we reduce the size, okay? Yes, I will make up some slides and uh, uh, trying to say this. But again, this methods is kind of a take in turns, reducing and uh, moving, they're kind of a take in turns. So they, it will never miss the minimum. So just, yeah. So I will uh, do more slides on this. Okay, so everybody is happy now? Good, so anybody say no? <laughs> then I think that will be the end of this uh, session. So, okay. And uh, I will upload the, you know, this kind of everything and um, you know, the, 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 the recording, the homework, and the slides, and uh, the code. So everything will be uploaded. And um, yeah, so again, I'm sorry that I have to give you this kind of, uh, you, know, uh, you know, remote uh, lectures, uh, but I try my best to, you know, so that you can reach out to me, okay? So that will be the end of this session. So thank you everybody, and uh, enjoy.
Bye bye. I give you time to say bye. Okay, so bye bye.